Hello, friends, it's Kat from Yam Yam Kapow. There are plenty of different kinds of watercolor papers out there, as well as plenty of different ways that they're presented. One such type is as a block, which means it's a bunch of sheets of paper that are glued together around the edges instead of being loose like in a book or as individual sheets. Why might you use a watercolor block rather than loose sheets? For some, the answer is convenience and reliability. Adding water to paper usually makes it buckle or get wavy and wiggly and weird, so one thing people do to prevent that is tape their paper down to discourage it from warping. But let's say you don't have a surface to tape your sheet down on. Well, a block is totally a great way of already having a self-contained, ready-to-go surface that's already been restrained for you. Because of the glue holding it in place and forcing it to stay in its original dimensions, blocked papers usually dry either completely flat or very nearly. It's a great way of keeping your work clean and professional looking and making it really easy to scan into your computer. Weird, lumpy parts on normal paper usually leave shadows and warping in scans. By the way, you can find super inexpensive blocks like the Fluid 100 series that I've already reviewed on this channel, as well as super expensive ones like the Notorious Arches brand, so this isn't exactly an exclusively fancy thing. Blocked papers usually cost a bit more than loose sheets, but you're really paying for the convenience of someone else wrangling your paper for you ahead of time, so that's to be expected. Once you're done your marvelous masterpiece, how do you separate it so you can hang it on your wall or deliver it to your sweetie pie? Well, every block of paper has at least one small space where there's no glue, leaving access to individual papers. Some blocks leave more than a small space, and it's not uncommon to see an entire edge without the glue on it, but regardless, there should be a point that allows you access. I'd recommend against digging your finger into the opening and pulling off the page by hand because while that may work in a pinch, you also run the risk of ripping the painting you're trying to remove. I've for sure done this when I've used a block out in the wild, but I've also ripped painting slightly before as a result, so that's why I advocate for the use of some sort of tool. With super, super, super rare exceptions, only in the most dire of situations, don't use a blade of any kind to take the page off. Why? A lot of times, without even meaning to, you'll end up scratching the page below it, which means the next time you go to paint anything using that block, there will be weird sections where you can't figure out why strange lines are forming. At worst, you'll actually slice off a sliver or so of the page, and I'm hoping you can imagine how disappointing that kind of damage might be. Instead, use something smooth like a plastic palette knife or a bone folder if it'll fit in the space. I've used a guitar pick before, and that was also effective. Also, one instinct I've seen a lot of people jump straight for is a sawing motion, and while that certainly will get the job done, it also has the potential for damage. Think about if you're using a serrated knife on a loaf of bread. See it in your mind's eye as you slice the knife back and forth, back and forth, and the fluffy loaf underneath it sways with each motion. Now, think about what that might do to your paper if you're pushing the glue back and forth. There's a chance that your edge will end up ragged and wiggly and not particularly smooth. Instead, use a motion that only goes in one direction. If you place your palette knife or whatever you're using into the opening, you can then push it out from the inside and break the barrier. When you go back in, don't push up against that glue wall, just slide your knife back into the next space and push out again, busting through. By only ever pushing outwards, you prevent any last minute warping and destruction of your paper, which is the whole point of using a block in the first place. It might take a little while to get used to only doing the outward pushing motion when you do this, but if you're mindful about it, this is a great method. As a bonus tip, this is also a great way to use your bone folder to cut larger pieces of paper down. Just fold your paper, slip your bone folder into the opening as though it were a glued block, and push outwards from the seam as though the fold itself were glue. It'll leave you with a homey, ripped edge rather than a precise cut edge, but that's definitely something I enjoy. As always, I've linked all the materials from this video down in the doobly-doo and even recommended some watercolor blocks I have experience with. As mentioned in my Fluid 100 review, the glue around the edges of it is super thick, so just be aware of that if you have dexterity or pain considerations, as it can be a real bugger to try and make let go. Was this helpful for you? I've mentioned this technique before buried deep inside of other videos, but felt it was something that perhaps deserved its own spotlight so it could be more easily found and readily available. What are some other similar processes that you'd like mini tutorials on? I'm game if you are. Until I see you next time, I wish you peace, love, and palette knives. Bye!